Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am answering a question that I got asked this past week, which is, how do I know if somebody is emotionally unavailable or if they are a narcissist? And this is a great question. I've actually talked about this a little bit before. On this channel, I have a video that I did about how to tell the difference between someone who's a jerk and somebody who's a narcissist. But let me go over the exact ways um, that you can tell the difference between somebody who is emotionally unavailable or if somebody is actually a narcissist. So there's a lot of things that might seem very similar about somebody who's emotionally unavailable versus somebody who's a narcissist. Number one, somebody who's emotionally unavailable will fear intimacy. And so they will um, try to not um, let you all the way in. And you'll always get the sense that there's something that they're not telling you or there's a place that they're not willing to connect with you um, in their life. And and again, this is um, because they uh, often don't know themselves in that area. So um, somebody who's, an emotion, who's emotionally unavailable is emotionally unavailable, not just to you, but to themselves as well. People who are in tune with how they actually truly feel, um, how they think about things, how they process things, are at least able to communicate with you about those issues, even if they don't want to let you in all of the way um, and let you let you connect with them in that space, which is okay because everybody is allowed to have boundaries, they will at least be able to communicate with you what their current thoughts about that are. Lots of times when you uh, run into emotionally unavailable people, they will just stonewall you from, uh, from, from asking questions. They just simply won't uh, respond or they'll be very elusive in their answers. And they, so again, they won't be comfortable sharing their innermost thoughts and feelings with you because they're not actually av available. Those things aren't available to themselves. They've never sat down and actually looked into how it is that they actually feel or think about those things, what it is that they actually want. They they haven't met themselves in that area. You know, I tell my clients that I can actually only meet you as deeply or as well as you've met yourself. So if you don't know who you are, I can't help you um, in that specific area. I can give you tools that can help you meet yourself in that area. But if you don't know yourself, it's going to make it very hard for other people to get to know you. And that's one of the things that is a clear sign of somebody who's emotionally unavailable. They just have no um, place to start when it comes to sharing their deepest thoughts and feelings. I'm just going to keep going through just some of these traits before I talk about how this differentiates between uh, somebody who's emotionally unavailable and, and a narcissist. Another thing that an emotionally unavailable person will do is um, avoid commitment. They get easily defensive. Um, they just aren't available for deep conversation. They're available for superficial things, for easy things, but hard conversations, true conversations, deep conversations, they're just not there for. Um, it can also seem like they don't em em empathize with your feelings, that they don't really um, connect with how you're connecting and uh, uh, to a situation. So if they hurt you and you're trying to explain how that uh, how their behavior, how their words made you feel, they're not able to connect there, right? They're, um, and again, they can get defensive. They can use blaming. They'll blame you for those things. So these are just a few signs, right, of somebody who's emotionally unavailable. And if you are watching this video, you're probably thinking, the narcissist does all of those things. How do I know the difference between that person and, an, and a narcissist? Somebody who's emotionally unavailable, who's stunted in their emotional development, uh, will be open to hearing this type of feedback. So somebody who's, um, who's emotionally unavailable actually does feel emotions, right? And they, they are fully capable of, um, of putting somebody before themselves. It's just that they are... Um, afraid to do that, or they are um, they are 
afraid of what would happen to them if somebody knows them that well. So this is somebody who has unresolved trauma, somebody who has not worked through the things of their past. They're not in denial of those things. They just simply haven't taken the time to do the work required um, to, to work through those things so that they can have healthy relationships. A narcissist, on the other hand, will not even be able to admit that there are um, issues that they need to work on or that, hey, if I don't deal with this, I could lose this person. To a narcissist, this is always about control. And so um, if they if they were even able to say, you know what, you're right about that situation or I do need to do this work or um, or something like that, if they were able to say that, they would be giving up a certain level of control. Narcissists will often say things like, okay, I'll go to therapy. I'll go to all the therapists, right? I will see a behavioral therapist. I'm going to go see um, a psychologist. I'm going to see all of these people. I'm going to, um, let's go to marriage counseling. And that's an, a huge red flag. <clears throat> Somebody who's emotionally unavailable will be able to say, I need to work on that thing, on like this specific thing or this specific issue that you brought up or uh, or or whatever the case may be. But they will know that inviting in all of the therapists, inviting in all of the counselors is going to overwhelm them and actually not help them um, process what they've gone through or process uh, unresolved trauma and wounds. A narcissist, on the other hand, is doing it all for show. And it's more of a manipulation tactic than it is an actual like I'm ready to do this work tactic. If you ever see somebody who's willing to literally go to all of the therapists and start everything all at once, that person is using it as a control mechanism. They're not actually wanting to uh, resolve any issues. They're just trying to do the things that they need to do to keep you as a supply. That is one of the number one ways that you can tell if you're dealing with a narcissist or an emotionally unavailable person. An emotionally unavailable person will also take what you're saying and think about it. <clears throat> Seriously, think about it. Uh, um, in even Even when it's uncomfortable, they would hear what you had to say and are able to self-reflect. A narcissist, on the other hand, will hear what you're saying and think of a way to use it against you and think of a way to turn that around to be your fault or to um, to somehow make you feel like you're responsible for that situation or that action or that feeling or, or whatever it was that happened. They will turn it around to be your fault. There will be absolutely no... Um, no way that that person is taking responsibility um, for the things that you were bringing up that are that are causing these issues. You know, with all of these things that I'm listing, the the behaviors on the outside seem to be the same. So um, emotionally unavailable people often create, um, you know, large pools of people that they can date, um, hook up with, um, that will give them some sort of, um, uh, physical, um, uh, connection or, or even just a attention of any type, right? And narcissists obviously do this as well, <clears throat> but emotionally unavailable people do this to, uh, to kind of numb the pain. This is, this is often a emotionally unavailable person's, um, uh, alcohol, if you will, or or drug of choice. It's that, of course, I'm not emotionally unavailable because look at all of these people that are around me, that love me, that want attention from me and things like that. A narcissist does this to control those people and to get them to a place that they want to go. So there's always a reason why a narcissist is doing what it, whatever it is that they're doing. There's a reason for it. There's a goal behind it. Um, and it's not to just kind of stay the same, which an emotionally unavailable person is, right? They just want to feel nothing. They want to be numb. They want to appear normal, but they don't want to actually deal with this wound um, or these things that happened uh, that they haven't processed through all of the way. A narcissist, um, a narcissist is doing this because they are 
you, they're using the situation to control all of those people and to keep a deeper um, supply, <laughs> a supply basket, if you will, of people that they can turn to for when they need an extra, uh, when they need a different type of supply. And so the, the key thing that you need to look at is the motivation behind these behaviors. Because again, these can all seem um, like, they, they all seem very similar, right? Oh, my narcissist does that. Or, you know, my best friend does that. Or whatever your situation might be. <clears throat> when we look at other things, uh, for example, I did a video on this channel where I talk about the difference between going no contact with a narcissist and the silent treatment, right? These can appear very similar, right? I'm, no contact means I'm not communicating with a narcissist. I'm not um, checking their social media. I'm not uh, I'm not checking up on them. I'm not driving past their house. I'm not doing any, I'm going no contact physically um, in all of my senses, in my eye gates, in my, um, in my ear gates. I'm, I've completely stopped connection with them physically and I'm removing myself emotionally from that as well, right? Where the silent treatment is a way that the narcissist uh, can control you and your emotions. It actually strengthens the trauma bond. So these behaviors can appear the same, like we're both not communicating in either one of these, but the reasons and the motivations for them and the ultimate end goal for them are completely different. <clears throat> and so uh, it's really important that, you know, this is why I, I teach people on this channel to, first of all, you're, you're not capable legally or otherwise to diagnose people. Um, and you shouldn't try to do that. You should know the red flags, absolutely. Um, and, and be able to spot what is toxic for you. But more than that, you should be able to spot what's just not healthy for you. There can be healthy people, totally healed and healthy, amazing people, but they're just not the person that you need to be connecting with right now. There are people who are um, who are great people, but you'll never be connected with them just because your paths in life are, uh, lead you into two separate directions. And this is all okay. So it's not enough to just say, hey, this person is a narcissist, this person is toxic. But also to be able to say, you know, my energy is valuable. Is this person actually who I'm supposed to be connecting with right now? And that's one of the things that I'd like to see more uh, conversations focus on. But when it comes to an emotionally unavailable person versus a narcissist, the motivation behind it will always be the uh, the the differentiating um, factor in this situation. Also, an emotionally unavailable person has the ability to feel empathy. They have the ability to um, to see another person's point of view and to truly want to change, to truly do the hard work to change the fact that they are um, closed off or that they have these you know, walls around these certain areas in their life. They're able to do that. It's just a matter of finding the motivation for them internally to actually do that work. Where a narcissist will not do that work, but they may go through the motions. And remember when I've, I've always said on this channel, narcissists are learning. They're constantly learning about how to use you as a supply, how to better use you as a supply, but they're also learning how to be a better narcissist. And so oftentimes narcissists will go to all the therapists, as I said before, and they will learn how to use those um, tools against you. They will learn how to use those those things that they're supposed to be using on themselves to help themselves get better during therapy. They'll actually turn around and use it against you. And that is another way that you can tell if somebody is emotionally unavailable or if they're actually a narcissist because it will, again, always be about the narcissist having whatever it is that they want. You know, whether that's more control over you, more ability to manipulate you, or better perfect their craft as a narcissist, well then, yeah, they're, of course they're going to go to all of the therapists. They're never actually going to do the one thing that would actually help them become aware of their behavior. They just won't do that. An emotionally unavailable person would be able to say this actually, this lifestyle, this way of living isn't, uh, isn't the best suited for me. It isn't serving me. I could have something better. I could have something deeper and I'm ready to do the work to to form that type of friendship or that type of relationship with somebody.
So you guys, I hope this video helps you understand the difference between somebody who is emotionally unavailable and somebody who's truly a narcissist. Um, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel below and then turn on the little bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video to this channel.